Snowvember. Anyway, we're going to look at some rhythm ideas to help elevate your solo ideas. These are quick and easy. You can just throw them into your practice routine right away. You can also uh, use them when you're working over a backing track. Um, I strongly advise you to do so, or even just a drum beat. Something that will keep time while you play around in between that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so when we're looking at rhythm displacement, what we're going to be doing is just basically shifting where you're, um, where you're placing the notes at. So the best thing to do would be, you know, would be uh, not only playing on the downbeat, but playing on the offbeat, and then we're gonna play in between some of those beats too. So, you know, just grab a metronome and just turn it on. We, you know, can keep it probably right around, oh, I don't know, probably close to around like 60, 60 beats per minute, if this thing cooperates with me. All right, so, Essentially what we're gonna do is just do quarter notes. And what you can do is you can do, you can do four notes per string, three notes, you can do a scale. It doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing. Um, let's just do like fifth fret and we're just gonna do, um, we'll just do one note for right now because we're really focusing on the rhythm. So again, playing on the downbeats. So I'm gonna count and tap my foot along. Two, three, four. So just one, two, three, four. Really boring stuff to start with, right? Um, you can do a couple different things, all downstrokes and all upstrokes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to count eighth notes. We're going to add the and in there. So one and two, three and four, and one and two and three and four and So eighth notes. Then we could do other things like you know, uh, you know, doing your triplets, right? So one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. <clears throat> then we do sixteenth notes. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. Okay, <clears throat> we can get you know go deeper down the stack by doing groups of fives, groups of sixes, groups of sevens, but that's really you know that's. The more you do this, the more you'll get into doing those. I'm just showing you the concept of practicing this so that you can change the way that you phrase and maybe change the way that you feel rhythm, okay? So, because uh, I used to play everything on the downbeats all the time and things got stale really fast. So, trying to start a phrase on a um, on an offbeat is actually uh, real refreshing when you can add that into your playing. So. All right, so the idea would be now to play in between the beat. So, I mean, technically you can play, um, yeah, we can play quarter notes in between the beat, right? So it's basically playing on the ands, but we can do, you know, like one and two and three and four and one and two. And you can start your eighth notes actually, you can start your eighth notes on the on the and and then just play in between the beats that way. So one, let's see, one and two and three and four and one and two. So you're just starting on a, you're just starting on the offbeat really. So um, that only comes into play when you're actually like doing a line. So if you're doing like a scale that used to be like, you know, one and two and three and four and so on. 
you can do that on the offbeat. So one would be a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you're end, you're end, ending, um, you know, your chord tones are kind of laying on offbeats, which sometimes has a bigger, uh, more, uh, more effective um, impact than playing everything on the downbeat. So it's good to practice scales doing on, a, on the offbeat. The other thing I've, I've been doing a little bit of, and I go back and forth between doing this because it's more of a feel thing for me, but you could do 16th notes, or you can do even triplets. Um, you do triplets, and um, let's see, my, my metronome is actually not keeping time anymore. Um, you can do triplets, and you can do the same thing. You can do... Um, you know, you can play on the beats, or actually, you can play on the beat and the and the and, but not the uh. So, um, so like with a normal triple, we have you know one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two, three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three, three and a four and a one and a two and. So we can leave out the the, the the eighth note in between that. So four and a one and a two and a three, four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. We can do that. We can also go to sixteenth notes and start playing around with different subdivisions there as well. So we have, um, you know, you have one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e. Two and so you want to leave different things out. So we go one e, then come in on and a, uh. one e and a, uh. so e and a, uh, four e and a, uh. one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a, uh, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a, uh, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a, uh, one. All right. So basically, the other thing would be you know starting your phrases on off beats. So. If you do a phrase that's more, you know, you might want to start something uh, on an offbeat. So instead of starting it um, right on the downbeat, you do. I'm just kind of like purposely going, starting on an upbeat. pocket of what's the, that dead air that that dead space is where you play you know when some when the beats are happening you got you, you know, maybe for me I feel more 16th notes in there and that's why it makes more sense to me or maybe I'm feeling triplets a lot so I'm able to kind of hook onto that groove and find the spot in between the notes or between the beats where I want to start my phrases so um, beginning and ending on those phrases are, are some cool ideas um, we'll add some rhythmic punch to your lines and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Feel free to check out my channel anytime. There will be more updates coming, uh, more tabs for solos I've done, and I'm going to release more lessons into the wild. So, uh, And I think I might even put together a guitar techniques uh, course that goes along with the ebook that I have out uh, that most of my private students get. So if you're interested in that, uh, sign up for the channel. Stay tuned, and I hope to see you guys around soon. Stay true, stay on fire. Peace.